1.2 billion people in the world do not have access to electricity. Of those 1.2 billion, about 590 million live in sub-Saharan Africa. This is referred to as energy poverty. The Zambezi River is the fourth largest river in Africa. This video documents a generator that was deployed in the summer of 2013 on the Zambezi River using a water wheel to produce electricity. To understand the project, a brief historical perspective is needed. People washing and bathing along the banks of the Zambezi River have lost loved ones to the jaws of crocodiles. The solution to avoid these tragedies was to install a spiral water pump to bring the water to a safe distance from the shore. Seattle University professor Dr. Phil Thompson led a senior design project to build this using locally available material. The students completed the project in the summer of 2009. The water is pumped to the top of a series of connected cisterns that serve as a community area to wash clothes. Since then, the locals improved on the design and learned from their mistakes. Since 2009, they are on their sixth generation platform. At the same time, Dr. Henry Louis was working on a senior design project to make human power generation from parts available in Zambia. Following that, the electrical research turned to wind energy. After three years of successfully deploying wind turbines, the Zambian locals asked if the water wheel could create electrical energy. The primary challenge is that a water wheel moves much slower. Steve Sabia led a senior design team that used a common washing machine motor which could operate at slower speeds. The unique design uses ceramic magnets on the outside, rotating around 72 three-phase coils on the inside. The concept was to mount the generator onto a platform, then use pulleys to speed up the generator. Then bring the power to the shore and use power electronics to convert the power to charge a battery. The heart of this project was to discover the right generator and design power electronics to control the charging. This required computer simulations, followed by testing, computer modeling, and then testing again in order to optimize the power output. Testing took several months and required a custom test bench and special test procedures. Final testing had to simulate the installation, which was based on a two-stage mechanism to increase the speed of the generator. The generator was to be placed on a platform and the first stage was connected to a two-inch shaft. The wheel was designed with flexible bearings so that either side could be lifted out of the water for maintenance. The levers could be secured using a chain on the back of the frame. One change was made to the final design. The first stage was changed to a motorcycle chain and the second stage remained as a belt. While this could all be designed in the lab, the challenge is to pull it all together. A concrete anchor was built using a tube of sheet metal, rebar, and pipes. It was connected using a 5 8 inch steel wire. The anchor was placed by setting it on the front of the boat and then dropping it into the fastest current. A rope and floats were connected to the steel wire so that the wire would not sink to the bottom and get lost. Then, the water wheel platform was launched. This is the lightest water wheel made to date because the pontoons are made of 0.9 millimeter stainless steel. Guiding the floating platform using paddles, the team of locals gently pull the steel wire and move it into position. Mm -hmm. 
Meanwhile, a team was on shore, digging to install the 400-foot electrical cable to the equipment at the charging station. While preparing the trench and cable, the generator mounting was started by the electrical team. This work was delicate because all of it was completed on the water. The construction team had only one of each part, so everything was tethered. Although the layout was tested in the lab, the final installation needed to be precisely installed and mounted to avoid conflict between the generator's electrical parts and mechanical motion. Once the main electrical was connected, the platform was ready to have the chain connected and the wire brought from shore. <laughs> Putting over 400 feet of wire into a conduit proved to be a challenge because it had to be pushed. This was accomplished by putting the conduit on a downhill slope and pouring liquid soap into the pipe to make the wall slick. Once the continuous pull of the wire made it to the shore, the line was brought to the platform, then filled with water to make it sink. With the electrical cable now on the water wheel, the generator could be tested. But before testing, we return to the original project, which includes the electronics and charging station. The cable was installed to the control cabinet and the electronics were secured. When the power was tested, it worked better than the original design. The complete system had several deep cycle batteries that were all tied through an inverter to the house. It can power everything connected to it, about three kilowatts of load. As an afterthought, the spiral pump was installed on the opposite side and it worked at pumping water with no loss in electrical generation. The mighty Zambezi River. The potential to bring power and water through the use of water wheel technology makes this a very viable solution for people living off the grid near rivers. The cost of this water wheel is much less expensive than the equivalent energy from a solar panel. Seattle University, the College of Science and Engineering, the Department of Electrical and Computer Engineering, and Professionals Without Borders, students, staff, and faculty making innovative and simple designs that are maintainable and sustainable. This proof of concept shows that this off-grid technology can be used to power electric devices as solutions to energy poverty in the developing world. <laughs>